You are listening to a sermon from Village Baptist Church in Petaluma. For more sermons like this one, please visit our website at villagebaptisthome.org. Our mission is to win people to Christ and develop them into active disciples. We pray this sermon is a blessing to you. Now let's hear today's message. The last time that we met, we discussed uh, how to live your life as a Christian in this pandemic. And uh, we have been looking at Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8, 9, and 10. And I'm going to read it again as we continue uh, in this uh, message. And Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, And this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So we have been looking at this passage and... uh, we broke it down into four categories. One is we are created to serve God and also that we are saved to serve God. We dealt with those two last time. Today, we're going to deal with the last two sections of this passage that we are called to serve and that we are also commanded to serve. In fact, this is one of the most important aspects of our Christian life, and it is very important that we pay attention to this. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8, 9, and 10. But we're going to deal with more than just the Ephesian passage. So today we want to look at we are called to serve. We are called to serve. If you are a Christian, you are called to serve God. If you are a Christian, you are called to serve God. I think we have this problem today. I don't care where you are in the world. To people thinking about the clergy and the laity. The clergy meaning those who are ordained, those who are licensed and ordained to serve, those who have received a special calling on their lives to do ministry for God. That's the clergy. The laity are the people of God who are saved. So in in a sense, the, the clergy can also be part of the laity. But if you're thinking about the technical terminology, we're differentiating the two. We're saying those that we call the clergy, or we put reverend beside their name, or sometimes we call them minister so-and-so, or we call them bishop so-and-so, they are the ones who are now termed as clergy. They are the ones, people of the cloth. They are the ones who are called specifically to serve God. But that is really a lie because we are all called to serve God. If you are a Christian, you're called to serve God. If you are a Christian, you are a minister. If you are a Christian, you are in leadership. You're in leadership in your church. You're in leadership in your community. You're in leadership in the world. So just to say, well, these people are called, these people are licensed and ordained, uh, different from uh, these people that are just, we call them just church members. And we need to get away from that uh, bad terminology. We are all the people of God. We are all ministers. We are all called into service. For we, when he says for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, it is not just talking about ministers. It is not just talking about deacons. It is talking about everyone, anyone that is born again. Anyone that can look at Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9 and apply it to themselves should also apply verse 10 to themselves. So it's Ephesians 2, 
8, 9, and 10. We are all called to serve. And what do we, we have a technical terminology for this, and we say you are a priest. So we are all priests of God. The priesthood, the priesthood of all believers is one of the things we talk about. We talk about it in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are God's chosen people. You know, for he has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So we are all the people of God. Now, in the Old Testament, let me just bring it in a capsule form. In the Old Testament, not everybody can serve as a priest. In the Old Testament, not everybody can serve as a priest. In fact, you have to belong to a particular family in order for you to serve. That family is called the Levites. So not all Levites are priests, but in order for you to be a priest, you have to come from the line and the family of the Levites. It is not so in the New Testament. In the New Testament, we are all called. We are all priests. So if I call you a Catholic priest, I am using the correct terminology. If you are a Christian, you are a Catholic priest. I am not saying you are a Roman Catholic priest, but I'm saying you are a Catholic priest because the word Catholic simply means universal. So you are a universal priest of God. You can be a priest here in the United States, in particularly in Petaluma, California, or in Novato, or in Vallejo, wherever you are, you can be a priest. But at the same time, if you move and you go to North Carolina or South Carolina, or you go to New York, you don't cease to be a priest. You're still a you're still a priest of God. If you move to Nigeria, you move to Republic of Benin, or you move to the United Kingdom, you are still a priest, even though you are no longer in the location where you are. Your priesthood is not tied to a location. It's not geographically directed. You are a priest of God wherever you are. That is why you are a Catholic priest. Every single child of God is a Catholic priest. You are called to serve. So if you're a priest, that means you have service. So if you're a priest, that means you have service. You don't just have a title. You have service. You cannot be a priest without a service. You are a Catholic priest. You are a priest in the house of God. You are a priest in the body of Christ which means you have service to perform. If you are a priest, you have service to perform. Unfortunately today, we have people who think that the only time they can serve is if they have reverend beside their name or they have deacon beside their name. No, if you are called by God out of darkness into his marvelous light, if you have been born again by the Spirit of God, if you've turned your life around, if any man is in Christ, he is what? He is a new creation. All things are past, behold, new has come. So whoever you are, you have been made a minister by the blood of Jesus Christ. You have been made a minister in the body of Christ because you are born again. Now, don't get me wrong. I I am not trying to deny that some have specific calling in their lives, or I won't be sitting here preaching and teaching you. I had a special calling in my life back before 1973. Somewhere around there, I had a special calling in my life, and God has been using me since, whether it be uh, in Canada or in Nigeria where I started, uh, I was not an ordained minister or licensed minister or anything like that in Nigeria. But I got my calling. I went to Canada, and I served uh, two churches uh, in Canada. Uh, and then I moved to the United States, and uh, I served several churches in the United States. But the 
church that I've been in for over 40 years now is the Village Baptist Church. But I have always ministered because I believe God has a special calling in my life to preach and to teach and to touch people's lives. So I, I will not tell you that some people don't have special calling in their lives, but there is a general call. There's a general call. We have a specific call, but there's also a general call that applies to all Christians, whether they're ordained or not. There's a general call to serve God. So we are called to serve, and we are a priest in the house of God. You know, what makes me glad in the local church, at least let me use Village Baptist Church as my example because that is where I have spent most of my life. I am always so happy when I see people who do not, who do not have reverend beside their names or have deacon beside their name or have minister beside their name who are working and moving the church to where God wants it to be. Remember now, we are working, we are doing this in order that the body of Christ may be built up, may be edified. And so I am very great, grateful to people who serve as team leaders in the church, people who serve as teachers, people who serve as ushers, people who uh, serve as uh, uh, financial management people. When people are doing what God has called them to do with the specific gift that God has given to them, which we call the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that's what I am excited about. I am not necessarily as excited when people who have titles beside their names are doing the leadership. So when I look at Village Baptist Church, you have to excuse me here. I'm making it a little bit personal. When I look at Village Baptist Church, and I'm looking at the people who make us who we are, the people who serve whether they have titles or not, I'm thinking of Aaron Donegan. I'm thinking of Rosa McBride. I'm thinking of Tamara Hall. I'm thinking of Mary Ellen Lagomasino and George Lagomasino. I'm thinking about Etienne Douglas. I'm thinking about Oren Carpenter. I'm thinking of Makila Jones. I'm thinking of Mark Spruce. I'm thinking of Joe Tyler, Shalina Tyler. I'm thinking of Maud Akonyo and Shante Akonyo and Alfreda Akonyo. Make it sound like Akonyo is all over the, the church. I'm thinking of Ataya Hunt. I'm thinking of uh, 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 Tierra uh, uh, Conover. Oh, she's going to kill me. I think I, I, just, I just messed up her name. Uh, but I'm thinking of people who don't have title. They're not called deacons. They're not called ministers. There's, they're not reverend. But they work. They give their life. They're not asking for anything. They serve in leadership position at team leaders. They serve in... Sunday school, they teach, they serve a cell group. They, you, whenever you call on them, they serve on a mission team, they serve on the management team, they serve, serve on the membership team, they serve on the uh, maturity team. These are the people who make the church what it is. But not only that, I'm talking about people who are not limited to this church, Village Baptist Church but they see the world as their mission field. They see the world as where they need to go, where they need to touch people's life, in Petaluma, in Novato, in Valhalla, in uh, San Francisco, wherever they are in Marin County, wherever they are, they are touching people's lives in the name of Jesus for the ministry of the church. We're called to serve. Don't wait until somebody gives you a title in order for you to serve. There are a lot of people with titles who are just useless in the church. Titles don't make you a priest. It's the work that you do and how you serve faithfully 
whether in pandemic or out of pandemic. That's it. We are called to serve. We're all called to serve. So before I move to the, to the last point, I just want to make it perfectly clear. For we are his workmanship. Who is we? Believers in Christ. Believers in Christ. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do the good works which he had before ordained. It's before ordained that we should walk in them. God has prepared us to do this. If you're not doing this, it's because you have not been called. Because if you've been called, the power of God will take you to where you need to be and will encourage you to do what you need to do. The Holy Spirit, the paraclete, our encourager, our teacher, our sustainer is there to help you do what God has called you to do. So next time you see me and I call you minister so-and-so, don't tell me I, I'm not ordained. You are a minister in the house of God. Now, the last point is, not only are we, com are we called to serve, we are commanded to serve. Every Christian is commanded to serve. We call it the Great Commission. Go ye therefore into the, all the world and do this. Go and work. Go and serve. Or uh, the proper Greek translation is as you're going, as you're going, you do this. We are called. The Great Commission is the commission to serve. And I want us to open, if you have your Bibles, open to Galatians chapter 5. We're going to look at Galatians chapter 5. And we're going to look at verse 13. Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. You, my brothers, are called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. What are we to do? We are to serve others. We are called to serve others. This is a command. This is not uh, an advice. Paul is not just advising you. Jesus is not just advising us. They are commanding us. It's in the imperative. They are commanding us. We are to do this. We are to go out. We are to share the gospel. We are to go out. We are to teach people. We are to go out. We are to baptize people. These things, we are to serve one another. We need to serve one another. Jesus uh, had a graphic example for his disciples. When he asked for water and he started washing their feet, he said, I am doing this. I'm your master. I am doing this. I am washing your feet. I am serving you. You, therefore, should wash one another's feet. You should serve one another. We are commanded to do it. Galatians 5.13 says it's very careful. Yeah, and then in Galatians 6, we are encouraged. Galatians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. It's a command. We are commanded to serve. We are serving, and as we serve others, we are serving God. As we serve others, we are serving God. I encourage my how to understand the Bible class for them to memorize 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. 
always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So it says always abounding in the work of the Lord. That is a command to all of us. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. It's an encouragement to all of us from the Apostle Paul. Always abounding in the work of the Lord for you know that your labor in the Lord, your work in the Lord is not in vain. During a pandemic, out of pandemic, it doesn't matter. We are called to serve and we are commanded to serve. We have received our call and we have been told what we need to do. Serve one another in love. Don't wait for somebody to come minister to you. I think it was one of the uh, presidents of the United States, I believe it was J.F. Kennedy, who said, ask not what your country can do for you or what you can do for your country. Ask not what the church can do for you or what you can do for the church. Ask not what God can do for you, but what you can do for God. Ask not what Jesus will do for you, but what you can do for Jesus. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with joy. Know that he is the Lord. He loves us and he commands us to serve him with all our hearts. God bless you. Thank you for listening. If you would love to hear more sermons like this one or find out more about our church, please visit us at villagebaptisthome.org. Until next time, take care and God bless.